welcome back to my channel if you're new here welcome my name is danelle and we are resetting for the year 2023 i cannot believe i just said 2023 like where has a year gone but here we are the end of the year is one of my most favorite times right after christmas because i am a very goal oriented person and i just like the last week in the year to take some time out to reflect you know light a candle have my favorite drink just take some quiet time with my thoughts and just reset and just get ready for the upcoming year so today i'm going to walk you through my three-step process that i use to get ready for the upcoming year is also be sure to watch till the end of this video where i will be doing an exciting giveaway that will help you reset your 2023 so step number one is gratitude for the first five or 10 minutes, I like to just reflect throughout the year and think of all of the things and all of the people that I am grateful for that played a part in my year. So when I think about the things that I'm grateful for, not only do I think of the good things, but I also like to recognize some of the quote unquote bad things that did or did not happen that I can still be grateful for. When you really think about it, life is not only shaped by good circumstances and good things happening. A lot of the times we grow and we become better persons because of some of the difficult circumstances that we've been through. So I like to take that time and also recognize that, you know, I went through something difficult. I went through something hard but I am still grateful for it because at the end of the day, it is being used to shape me. So I like to think back on all of the people and all of the things that I am grateful for and just use that opportunity to be thankful. This is the first step because it's very, very difficult to move forward with a positive mindset if you are hurt and bitter about the circumstances and the people that happened prior in your life. I think that one of the greatest things that we can do is just to be grateful for where we are now. That does not mean that we become complacent, but it does mean that you recognize that where you are now is shaping you and molding you into the person that you want to be and that you will be. And it's important to recognize that and be grateful for it and appreciate it. For me personally, I try not to just stop at just being thankful, but I also try to reach out during this time. So as I think of persons that played a significant role or even a small role, throughout the year, I try to reach out to them, thank them for the part that they played. So whether that be through a message, whether that be a card, whether it, it's a call, I think it's really important to appreciate the people that are playing active, positive roles in your life and not just wait for a time when they're no longer there and that cannot be done. I think that having a heart of gratitude and actually showing it to the people that mean a lot to you goes a long way in being able to take positive steps forward. Now, having a grateful heart can sometimes be very difficult depending on the circumstances that you are in. And I don't think having a grateful heart was meant to be easy. One of the scripture verses that gets quoted very often is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But I think a lot of the time it's taken out of context. If we read the scripture well, we realize that Paul was actually talking about being in very difficult circumstances. So I don't need to get preachy on you guys, but I actually went for my Bible. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 11, it says, I don't say this out of need, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I find myself. I know how to make do with little, and I know how to make do with a lot. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being content, whether well-fed, or hungry whether in abundance or in need i am able to do all things through christ who strengthens me now a lot of people use this verse and they take it out of context and apply it to each and every situation but if we look at the verses prior we realize that when paul talks about being strengthened by christ to do anything he was talking about being content because being content is actually very hard it's very hard to look at what you have and be content with it. 
Now, a lot of people mix up contentment with complacency. That's another topic for today. But I really do think that before we even look forward to the next year, before we even set those huge goals, we need to be content and grateful for the things that we do have. And I think that that attitude opens the door to reach even greater heights, being grateful and content in the circumstances where we are now. The next thing that I like to do is reflect. So step two in my little new year reset process is reflection. I think that reflection is actually very key to moving forward. I know a lot of people like to use the analogy that when you're driving, the windscreen in front of you is very big, but the rearview mirror is very small. And if you don't, if you look into the rearview mirror, you'll crash. That's fine. But I really do think it's a necessity to be able to look back and reflect on the past so that changes can be made in the future. If you do not recognize that something is wrong, then you will never be able to change it. So one of the things that I like to do is reflect on things that worked and things that didn't work. Those are the two categories that I use, things that worked and things that didn't work. And the goal of that is to be able to recognize things that I did during the year that worked well for me and I would possibly like to continue in the new year. And I also like to reflect on the things that did not work and that I need to change in the upcoming year. So for example, one of the things that works really well for me was meal planning. With my schedule, with all of the stuff that I have spinning on my plate, meals can be very stressful for us as a family. But I recognize that if I meal plan the week prior, it made life a lot simpler. And so one of the things that I think that I will be doing for a very long time is meal planning because it worked for me and it's something that I need to keep on doing. One of the things that did not work for me, for example, was my social media detox. So I have been trying to take one day off social media, off Instagram, off Facebook, at least one day during the week. And typically that's a Sunday. But for this, the last couple of months, I have just not been able to do it. And I think it's because I have not been deleting the app off my phone. When I used to delete the app, then it worked pretty well. But since I've stopped that, it's just become very difficult. So staying off social media one day a week is still a goal of mine. But now I need to figure out how to do it differently that is going to work. So that is what I mean by looking at what worked, what didn't work, so that you can not just keep doing the same things over and over again, expecting a different result. That's called insanity. I don't know where that quote is from, but it's a quote that goes around that makes a lot of sense. You cannot keep doing the same things over and over again and expect a different result, which is why I think it's very important and very timely at the end of every year or every birthday or every three months, whatever time frame works for you, it's a really good idea to sit back, be grateful for where you are, reflect on the things that you need to keep doing and the things that you need to change doing and allow that to shape your upcoming year. The third step that is my favorite is projection. So after I have had a heart of gratitude, after I have reflected on what worked and what did not work, now I am going to project. And by project, I mean look forward to what it is that I want to accomplish within the time frame that I have set for myself. End of year, obviously, I'm thinking of the upcoming year. Some people like a shorter time frame, so three months, six months, whatever the time frame is, I always think it's a good idea to project into the future and think of what it is that you want to accomplish. So how does this work? This I just I just find this concept so very fascinating and life-changing to be honest. Being able to take a goal that you want to achieve and breaking it down into the things that you have to do monthly, weekly, and daily to achieve those goals, it's just life-changing, especially if you have accountability and you're actually taking steps to do those things on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. There's no way you can't achieve your goal. So say, for example, your goal for the upcoming year is to be healthier, which, by the way, is not the best goal simply because it's very vague and it doesn't give you exactly what it is that you want to achieve. But let's say your goal is to become healthier. What is it that you can do in the month of January to help you achieve that goal? 
one monthly action item that you can do is to pay for a gym or register at a gym or maybe you don't like doing gym but you like playing football so you register for a football team that's something that you do monthly or at least in the current month that you are a weekly action item that you do something that you can do weekly that will help you become healthier one you do at least three workouts every single week or two you meal plan so that you're not buying food to eat when you're out and something that you can do daily would be for example making sure that you eat one salad a day make sure that you're using steps as opposed to using the elevator whenever you can so that is how you break down your goals you think of the items that you want to accomplish but you also break it down further into items that you can do monthly weekly and daily to ensure that you accomplish your goal now say you're like me if you're new here i'm a doctor i work 40 hour weeks at a private hospital my husband is also a doctor he works 40 to 60 hour weeks at a public hospital, maybe even more. And we have two little girls, a one-year-old and a two-year-old. So we have two toddlers. I also create content and I have other roles to fulfill. I have to take care of my home. I'm also a daughter, a sister. I have friends. I also have activities that I personally enjoy doing. It's a lot. It's a lot. Being a mom, being a career woman, it's a lot of things to handle. And i was reading a newsletter last week and it had something that really resonated with me because i can honestly say those were the two things that got me through 2022 foundation and structure and i would recommend to any mom any mom at all who feels very overwhelmed with the tasks that they have at hand with taking care of the kids and taking care of the home and career and all of that i would recommend focusing on these two things throughout the year foundation and structure those were the two things that i focused on last year and i think i'm gonna do it again next year and like i said it's it was building a strong foundation building a strong foundation on the word of god and on prayer because i don't know about you guys but if i did not have my faith if i were not christian i do not know how i would be able to do all of the things that i am doing or how i would be able to handle all of the kicks and the punches that life throws at you while you're just on your merry way doing what you're supposed to do so setting a foundation has really played a major role in being able to accomplish everything that i currently am taking care of and one of the things that I did was to commit to reading the Bible in a year. Am I doing it perfectly? No, not by any means. But it has really been a foundation for me. Why? Because in reading the Bible in a year, I've really sought out to just know more of who God is, learn more about his character. And that has been instrumental because knowing that God is good, Knowing that God is faithful, it really allows you to see life through a different lens. It allows you to take circumstances as they come through a different perspective. And building on that foundation of the word of God was also building on the foundation of prayer. And one of my goals for 2022 was to really lean into prayer, not just for the big things, not for the major things, but in the tiny little things, you know, like when... My toddler is throwing a tantrum and I've just had it up to here. I need extra patience to help deal with it. I have really leaned into praying about those seemingly little things that, you know, the devil tries to lie to you and tell you that God doesn't care, but he does. And I have seen his faithfulness throughout the year. And so I generally with all my heart think that as a mom who is also a career woman who wants to manage well everything that you're blessed with, their husband, their kids, their home. One of the first things that you need to do is set a strong foundation. And that foundation is only set on the word of God and in prayer. So I would recommend if you're looking to achieve great things in the upcoming year, then start by committing to reading your Bible every day and praying every day. So that is where foundation is concerned. Where structure is concerned, 
what I have been trying to do throughout the year was create a sense of structure. So I am very big on routines and I think that routines are good, not just for my little kids, but also for my husband and myself. We don't really have control with respect to work schedule. We find out when we work only a month before, we cannot tell you what we're going to do next month because we don't know what our work schedule is going to look like next month. So having routines in place has really helped us to have a sense of stability in our home. So for example, our nighttime routine is pretty much the same every single night. We have weekly meetings where my husband and I meet throughout the week. We do family devotions every night. We just have tasks that we try to do in the same order around the same time. Again, it does not happen perfectly by any means, but it does give us a sense of structure to our days and a sense of routine that allows things to flow and just come naturally. We have a one-year-old and a two-year-old and life can get chaotic very easily. Having a newborn, having a little child, having toddlers can really put a stress on just regular things. And so having a structure, certain things that are done on specific days, it's not always possible. It doesn't happen all the time, but it gives a sense of stability. So like I was saying, if you are a mom in similar situations to me, then two of the things that I would recommend wholeheartedly, hands down, is building a foundation and creating structure. So on that note, this is the last video for the year 2022. And I just really want to say thank you guys to all of you who subscribed. Thank you guys so much for watching. It really means a lot to me. And I would like to thank you guys in one of the ways that I think, sorry I'm breathless, I just spent the last God knows how long looking for this because I could not remember where I put it, but I found it. And I would, you know, I talk about this all the time. I talk about my prayer journals and how much I love them and how much they have done really well for me. And one of the ways that I would like to say thank you for joining me here on my channel, for supporting, for watching, is by giving away one of those. So I would love to give one of these away to you guys. It is a six month undated signature Bible. It is in the color pink, I think. This is a very pretty pink color. And it, it'll be one of you guys so that you can start off the new year in prayer. So if you are interested in winning this, then definitely like this video, make sure you're subscribed and comment below with your IG handle um, so that I am able to contact you if you win and just leave in the comment giveaway so that I know that you're interested in winning one of those. So thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you a very happy new year and I pray that it is a year filled with God's love, God's favor and growth in the new year. I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.